I sort of tore the insulation up under my house after the termites swarmed in the spring and then I didn't really do anything about it. I fixed the, where the termites were getting in but it was so hot I just decided to wait until it cooled off in the fall because the floor temperature doesn't really matter that much in the summertime. The floor of my bathroom is electrically heated so it would be comfortable enough but it would be really wasteful so I need to get some insulation up there. I've been putting it off also because I couldn't really decide what to do. I feel like I should take some more countermeasures against termites but I'm not really sure how. In fact I'm still not sure but I think I'm going to start working on it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to spread some cardboard underneath the house just so it's more pleasant to crawl around under there. And then that means I have to work really quickly because termites will eat cardboard. So if this takes the rest of the week and I end up with termites in my cardboard, I'm going to be really horrified. <laughs> About a month ago, I went ahead and bought my materials. I had to go to Lowe's to get the bubble foil, but I got the 12 volt powered stapler from Home Depot that works with my other tools. What I think I'm going to do is staple new shiny bubble foil with an air gap to the sides of the joists and then on the bottoms of the joist put another layer of nice new bubble foil and then tape the seams. That's my plan. That'll be a lot better than it was before. One thing I noticed this summer is I could definitely tell the floor was hotter where there was no insulation. Where there was insulation the floor felt a lot cooler. But a hot floor is really never that bad. Even in the summer you don't really want your floor to be cold. But it'll be cold next summer and I don't mind. One thing that's kind of tricky is there's things in the way. This conduit is my power coming from out at the well and then this wire goes into my panel box so I have to work around this big giant cable. <laughs> is lovely. very shiny and clean. I don't think there's any degradation from dust. That's fine. Does that look fine? Smooth. Food. This bright light makes these spiders a lot less frightening. Want to see him up close? There's another one right there. Oh, he's brown and scary. As long as none of them bite me, I guess it's okay. But, you know, it, since they don't eat termites, what the hell is even their point? Jerks.
some big spiders. It smells like fresh Advantech. I'm still pulling down some plastic and staples, but I've got all around the outside edges cleaned up. And the next step is I'm going to put caulk in these little cracks. I'm not really sure what the path is for air to go from through these cracks into the house because I have sill seal in there. But from time to time, I do get a scorpion in the house and they had to come from somewhere. So I'm going to seal all the cracks that go into the house and see if that stops scorpions and termites. I don't get a lot of insects in the house aside from those termites. Sometimes I get carpenter ants, but I think they're coming in the front door. I mean, I, I gotta come in and out. So if there's a hole big enough for me, <laughs> I can't keep all the ants and, and things from coming in too. Because my house is so little, it's not that hard. I'm just gonna caulk this. two rolls of this to do under the bathroom but that's not actually enough to do it twice so I ended up reusing some of the insulation I took out but I just put it down lower than it was before and now I want to cover the entire bottom part and tape it and really make an airtight vapor tight spider tight seal but because I didn't have enough I went to town and I bought two rolls of four foot wide reflectix so that I can do the main part of the house too. The main part of the house has open cell foam insulation that I added a few years after I built the house. I started out with no insulation just to see what it was like. It was fine in the summer, but in the winter, the floor was just too cold, it wasn't comfortable. My floor is thick, it's this thick of wood and I just wanted to see what the insulation value of that much wood is. It's not very good. So I sprayed foamed insulation when I did the Spartan. And that's okay, but it's, it's degrading a little bit from UV. So if I add some of this stuff under it, it might make it even more comfortable. I'll know in a few months. To get this four foot wide piece of reflectix up here, I need to move this electrical cable. This is the main cable to my house. I hope nothing goes wrong. I'm 
just going to let this down and put it back after I get this insulation in there. Before I staple this up here, I need to be sure there's enough wood underneath to put tape on. So I'm going to split the difference. My plan for today is to finish this last section of Reflectix but before I do that while I still have room to sit here with my head poking up into the space I'm going to replace the insulation on my cold line to my air conditioner. My air conditioner has been off all night so this line isn't wet right now. When I put my joists under this house I got them not spaced evenly so there's not enough room for me to staple the side of the foil on this side so I have to put this nailer up. The only thing I have is not pressure treated so this is edible. This will be like my termite bait. I can come over under here and poke it with a screwdriver and if it's soft then I'll know I'm in trouble I guess. <laughs> I was surprised how expensive this uh, rubbery stuff is. $30 worth of insulation to redo this stuff. do is you just hold it together and then pull the release papers at the same time. the wires that are loose. I think 
think I'm finally done. This was hard and I'm tired. My back hurts, my neck hurts, my knees hurt, my legs hurt, my ankles hurt, my feet hurt, my hands hurt, my shoulders hurt, but I think I'm finished. It's all taped, all the wires are fastened up and it looks like rain. I am too tired to do the rest of the house right now. Maybe I'll just stick the cardboard under there though. Also, I'm afraid that the four foot wide stuff is gonna sag so much, we'd be able to see it from the yard. So I need to think of something to use to either put above it or underneath it. I need some 12 foot long fireproof planks that I could just screw up there that would be really handy.